and I'm very pleased to be here on Build a Cloud Day um, to walk you through deploying a private class, uh, a private PaaS that is, um, using Staccato from ActiveState on CloudStack. A little bit about myself, I'm um, a developer and the cloud evangelist now for Staccato at ActiveState Software, and you can reach me if you need to um, at activestate.com um, and Diane M at activestate.com. So a quick note about ActiveState. Some of you may have heard of us. We've been around since 1997. We do language distributions for dynamic languages like Python and Perl and Tickle. And we have about 2 million developers using our products and tools, everything from our Komodo IDE to our SDKs for different languages to our language distributions that are on multiple um, platforms, everything from Windows to Linux to HBucks to Solaris, you name it. We're still um, doing all that good work. We've got about 97% of the Fortune 1000 using some of our products, so we're pretty much a trusted name with developers at enterprises. And what we like to say is that we empower innovation from code to cloud, smarter, safer, and faster. And today I'm going to tell you a little bit about what that means in terms of the cloud. Um, some of our customers, you can see here, we're in all sorts of different um, verticals, but um, suffice to say, manufacturing, banking and finance, government, um, healthcare, and a lot of um, high-tech um, technical groups are, are using our products as well. So, so what's on today's agenda? First, um, I'm going to try and, and talk a little bit about why and what is a private pass, and I'm going to give you a brief staccato overview. And then we're going to step through um, the do-it-yourself instructions for deploying staccato on, on CloudStack. I'm really pleased to um, um, be able to say that we do that now with, with ease, and I've had a great time um, learning the CloudStack uh, UI and console. It was quite easy to do, so I'm going to walk you through how to do that. And so you can create your own um, cloud stack deployment of Staccato after this call. Um, and we also have great online documentation, so I'll walk you through configuring Staccato on cloud stack. And then I'm going to do a bit of a live demo, always a risk, but um, that'll be fun. Deploying applications to cloud stack from the Staccato Web Man Management Console. And I'll give it to you from two different perspectives, from the perspective of the PAS administrator or the system admin who's in charge of the, the PAS, um, and also from a developer's point of view. Um, and we'll be pushing, um, I think today, and if we have enough time, we'll just push from the App Store and maybe from the desktop if we get enough time and I can squeeze it in. Um, and then I'm going to leave a bunch of time at the end for Q&A, and you'll see um, a lot of little notes at the bottom of some of my slides that um, have references to blog posts that are this one in particular, this slideshow and this um, deck and this demonstration is based on a blog post I wrote um, a few months back um, on deploying when we when we got access and we started um, finished our testing on CloudStack. So there's a, a good goodly amount of information there on the blog. There's also good information on community com slash staccato. Um, you can find lots of information there. So everything um, that I'm talking about is well documented within the Active State community site. So first of all, um, I just want to make sure we're all on the same play, playing field here um, and answer the question, what is a private platform as a service? And again, um, there's a, a good blog post um, with some detail on this on O'Reilly that I wrote um, quite a while ago, actually, in December of last year, that covers off all of this in detail. But um, suffice to say, you've heard all of these acronyms before, um, but I just wanted to show you the cake diagram one more time, um, just to be clear that this is software that we're deploying. Um, infrastructure as a service is what makes the servers and the hardware elastic. Platform as a service is what helps us um, deploy the stack that your application needs. Um, the things like uh, beyond just the, the empty Linux block that you get with the infrastructure as a service plays. Um, you also need web servers and routers and load balancers and you need your language distributions and any libraries you might want as well as your web frameworks and that's what Platform as a Service uh, does for you. It deploys all of that um, and instantiates it um, and connects it to the application and configures it for it for the application that you're deploying, hopefully in a secure manner, um, and uh, allows that application itself to be elastic. So it's taking the elastic computing one step further up the stack. And software as a service, you 
probably played with many of them. Everything from Facebook to Salesforce to um, the latest Zynga game um, is considered a software application that's running on the last of clouds. So um, in a nutshell, that's, that's what the, th the three big um, acronyms stand for. And private platform as a service is, is, is a platform as a service deployed on a um, infrastructure that is either within your own firewall in your organization or it's on a hosted private um, cloud service provider that someone like Equinix or Carenza in the UK or a number of folks and even AWS and other folks will give you dedicated pieces of hardware with your own infrastructure uh, as a service running on it. And, um, you can do that quite nicely with CloudStack as well. If you have your own enterprise um, deployment um, of CloudStack, you can deploy a platform as a service privately on that. So there's lots of reasons why um, you might want to do that. And um, from our point of view, the uh, oops, I'm going to go back one here because it apparently. So from dev, I just had a little hiccup there, but um, from dev to production, um, you want to be able to get there faster. Um, platform as a service lets you um, replicate your environments throughout the dev cycle, whether it's um, on a micro cloud that you're doing, you're doing your work as a developer or whether you're pushing to a test environment or staging or production. Basically what you want to be able to, to do in an enterprise development life cycle is to make sure that the environment that your developers are working on is exactly the same one as your testing and staging so you don't waste time um, retweaking the de developers applications because they had a, you know, a certain configuration on their de desktop that isn't there in testing and then when you move it to staging or production that um, environment changes. So what we're really trying to do is give you that seamless application lifecycle. Um, and it really eliminates the need for reconfiguring and recoding applications as you move them from different um, clouds and different um, instantiations of that cloud. So it's basically a seamless way to get from your code, from your developer's desktop, um, into the testing and staging and production environments. So why would you do this? Um, well, one, um, you reduce a lot of time to market. It standardizes your application deployments um, uh, methodologies, um, so the stacks that you're deploying, um, you have better, deeper control over what is actually getting deployed and what is actually um, being instantiated on your cloud, how much memory is being used. Um, these things can be now managed through the back, backbone of the PaaS service. There's also a security of the data that's being uh, used by deploying a private platform as a service, and I'll talk a little bit about this later. Um, you get a more secure containerization approach. Um, the data is behind your firewall still, and the applications are running within secure containers. This gives you some privacy and control over the data as well as over the application and the users and who have access to manipulate the, the applications that are running and the back end. Um, it also gives a lot more control for corporate IT of the actual stacks that are being deployed, there's no more hand configuring, and there's a lot more automation. It allows you to, or a good pause should allow you to customize your requirements. So if there are items um, in our platform as a service, for example, that we'll list in a few minutes, that you want, um, you don't want to offer. Say you don't want um, folks using Ruby, or you don't want them using um, MySQL for some reason. You can take those out of the um, the the availability in the PaaS and strip that down and customize it to meet your enterprise's requirements. And you mitigate your risk of downtime. Um, in a private environment or in private cloud, um, there really is no finger pointing at public cloud providers when, they, when, when you go down. You are the responsible parties for keeping your clouds up and running. And this may seem like um, an odd thing um, in light of some of the downtimes from um, AWS and Heroku and other other players that are having difficulties keeping their their um, stacks up and available all 100% of the time. But basically, what you're doing when you're bringing it private um, and in-house is you're taking control uh, and responsibility for keeping your cloud uptime. You're not putting it in the third party's hands. So, um, with a platform as a service, 
um, offering and a private on a private cloud. You really are um, the owners of um, of the cloud and of the responsibility for keeping up the cloud, and you're not putting it into third party hands. And this is really becoming more and more important um, as we see continued um, downtime issues with lots of the public providers. So here I'd like just to do a, a very brief um, overview of Staccato. Um, and basically the way we look at it is we work on um, with any language, on any stack, on any cloud. Um, today we're going to focus on cloud stack, um, but we are um, basically an application platform, not just for deploying apps, but for maintaining the um, for maintaining um, the entire life cycle for updating, versioning, patching um, the different pieces of, of the plus um, and of your application, whether it's the Nginx web server or the application itself or the database. We give you the tools to manage the entire life cycle of that application um, and um, eliminate the need to, to bring your applications down. So there's sort of three aspects of it, setting it up um, and making it so that it um, auto-scales. Um, we'll look a little bit at that today um, and show you how to create an auto-configuring private pause on top of um, Cloud Stack today. Um, then there's the side of developing and deploying, um, being able to um, use your existing tools like Eclipse or the Komodo IDE or whatever your um, tool set is for doing development for both new and um, giving you the tools to do back-end changes um, and manage um, at and deploying your existing applications in a few couple of steps. And then we'll um, talk a little bit about how we manage updates and upgrades today, probably not get into that too deeply. Um, we also have a partnership with uh, New Relic for doing application performance monitoring, which is um, embedded into um, every application that is deployed. Uh, we uh, have some basic yeah, and I will show you that basic monitoring capabilities built into our um, web management console, and I'll show you a little bit about that as well. So really what we, we'd like to, to see is sort of as a, a three-step um, or three-stage thing. You have your Staccato VM uh, or microcloud running on your desktop if you're a developer. Um, you're using either the client, your IDE of choice, and um, or you're de deploying from the command line, you take your application and you push it from um, your IDE or the client into the cloud and then your application is up and running. So this is sort of from a developer's point of view, this is how they think about getting an application into the cloud. The other thing developers think about, and probably most enterprise IT departments uh, um, think about as well, is um, what are the choices that I have? and is the pause provider um, giving me the, the things that I need in my stack to make my um, applications run and to support everything. Suffice to say, I'm a, uh, we support any language. Um, we also have uh, a patch, which there is a blog post on about applying Iron Foundry to give .NET support as well, and I can give you all a link to that uh, later if you'd like. Um, we support out of the box Active Python and Active Perl, two of our language distributions, multiple versions of Python, Java, PHP, Ruby, Erlang, Node.js, Clojure, Scala, and there are always more coming on because we're built on Cloud Foundry. And Cloud Foundry is an open source project um, sponsored in part by VMware, but there's a large ecosystem of partners, um, ourselves included. Um, we've actually, we're part, partners with um, VMware, and we are the folks who put Python into Cloud Foundry. Um, we also have added in the web frameworks, and I've only listed a few of, of the major ones here, Spring for Java, um, Python, Django, Bottle is a couple in there for Perl even, so we like to say back in 97 we put Perl on Windows, now we're putting um, Perl on the cloud. Um, there's Ruby and Rail and Flask, and there's probably um, half a dozen, dozen others as well, and you can always add more. We give a number of um, data and messaging services out of the box as well. Um, the ones we can redistribute it as um, they are all open source. Um, RabbitMQ is out of the box. Um, it's like MySQL, Postgres, MongoDB, and Redis. We do, the, however, also um, have uh, an, the ability to gateway and connect to others. So if you are using Oracle or other um, proprietary databases, there is a nice convenient way to um, connect um, securely to any external um, 
databases. We, out of the box, have Nginx and Apache Tomcat running on our systems. Um, we can also add others in. And that's sort of the beauty of being um, an extensible open source based project. Um, we are, uh, we layer our bits on top of the Cloud Foundry. Um, we've done some extensive work adding um, to the security model. Uh, and I'll talk a little bit about that in the next slide. But um, this is, suffice to say, it runs on any cloud. And we're quite happy um, to have added um, CloudStack to the mix recently. So I'm um, checking the time. And we, um, I'll go a little bit into this um, diagram here. What, we're, what you're seeing here inside the blue box is basically um, the architecture for the Staccato Platform as a Service. Um, we do have uh, a pretty robust uh, auto-scaling uh, structure. Uh, we have uh, the applications that will be running on what we call droplet execution agents, so those little Rubik's Cube-like boxes. Um, they get put on the stager initially and then pushed out to their own um, droplet execution agents. And you can have multiple of those. So part of the way that we do the updates and changes to your applications so that you don't have any downtimes is you can stage a new version of it, bring down an old one, and to the external web users, you won't see um, any downtime. So this is um, quite a robust system. It scales nicely. But I want to jump into a little bit more here and um, start talking a bit about creating um, and deploying Staccato on CloudStack, which is what we're all here for. And so to get started, um, basically, the first thing you'll have to do, and, and this is probably the easiest thing to do, but it takes the most time, is to download um, a VM from um, from the Active State website, and you can go to that URL. Um, if you want to try and follow along with me here, um, I advise you not to because it's about a 4.4 gig file that you'll be downloading, and then you'll have to convert it um, because on the uh, the website um, you need to have um, VDH format to upload into CloudStack. Um, as I'll be doing this with Zen Server, and I used a little um, freeware tool. Um, called um, Image Converter from Starwin. Um, it does take a bit of time to do the conversion, but basically what you're doing is you're taking your um, VMware VM that you just downloaded a few minutes ago and um, converting it to VDH. Um, if you have VirtualBox and you're running on a Mac or a Linux box, um, you can use VirtualBox's uh, conversion um, capabilities. So the next thing you have to do is once you've converted that whole thing, um, you then have to upload it to an accessible place because all of this is being done on the web and um, you have to make it accessible. So I chose to put it up on one of my um, own home websites and this did too take uh, quite a bit of time. Uh, I think I was doing it over Wi-Fi in a coffee shop. So uh, I don't advise you to do that. Use a direct connect. So once you've got that uploaded into a place that's accessible, then you'll need to log into CloudStack wherever you have it instantiated. And the good folks at um, the CloudStack Developer Summit gave me access to their dev camp um, for this demo. So I logged in there and um, I motivated myself and nav navigated over to the templates page. So you can, there's a wonderful UI. I can't say enough about how easy it is to use the user interface for CloudStack these days. Um, it made it a pleasure to do this. So you navigate over, you select templates, and there is a little create template button right here. Um, and you'll click on that. And then what you'll be doing is you'll be creating a template. Now the reason you're creating a template is you are, if you want to, um, we won't do it for this demo, but um, you can create a cluster of the pods. So you'll be spreading that architectural diagram. You may put the cloud controller and the load balancer on one instance and create multiple instances for DEAs and um, the database may be on another instance. So you'll, you would, in a normal um, situation, you would create multiple ones. And so using the template facility in CloudStack is, is a pretty awesome thing to do. Um, so what I've done here is definitely give yourself a name that you will remember. I'm using 1.2.6 version for this demo. I, we have a new release out. I think it will be at 1.4 by the time this airs. Um, and so then type in the URL 
that you gave. Um, there's probably a zone this for this one. Pick the hypervisor Zen server. You're uploading um, a VHD format and the OS type we use for our containers, and I'd advise you to use two here is Ubuntu 10.04. And 45 minutes later or so, um, once it's uploaded that 4 gig file, you will have a template. Um, it's a quite easy process to do. Um, so I advise you to do this, and then you'll have it there for reuse on your cloud stack instantiation um, for multiple times. There are times when you, beyond just having one pause cluster, you might want to have two or um, two clusters there. Um, you might have a staging cluster um, or others. So it's really handy to have these templates. So now that you've got a template, we want to use this, um, and we're going to step through adding an instance on this cloud stack world. Um, that is the DevCamp one. Um, you pick template and you add an instance. Then you pick the exact um, template that you've created, and this time it's B1.2. Um, but it's not just that simple. Uh, for active state, you have to at least use a medium um, 20 gigabyte uh, instance, anything smaller, there really isn't enough room um, or memory to do so. Uh, depending on the, the number of applications, you may do a larger disk. Um, you may spread this, it, as I said, you're probably creating a cluster, so you'll do multiples. Um, the network here was just the default one, and then again, um, you need to give some intelligent naming to um, your your actual instance, so I used Active State Staccato, and the group was for dev campers this time. The next thing you need to do is, and that will take a little bit of time to spin up that, but once you've, you've got your instance up and running, um, you'll have to click through on instances, click on the instance, and then I navigate to the, um, the instances tab for that specific instance, click on the, um, the Nix page, and what I want you to do here is I want you to remember your IP address. Um, you'll need that um, when you're configuring Staccato in the next few minutes. Um, the other thing that I wanted to point out is that if you've got a domain, domain name, you'll need that as well for um, configuring your pause. If you don't, um, we'll I suggest um, using this free service here from DDNS. Um, and, and a dynamic, you can get yourself a dynamic um, DNS if you're just playing around. Um, it's not a, uh, anything onerous, and then just assign yourself one, um, one of the free ones, and we'll, we'll be using that for this demo today. So once you've um, got that IP address, uh, you're going to putty in using the, the IP address, and um, for the first time, you've got to do a few small um, items. Um, Staccato has um, a client. Um, that has a staccato-admin um, feature to it, and if you, you type that in, um, once you've um, puttied into your instance, um, just do that, you should, then you can start to see um, the little basics here that are started up. So what you're going to need to do here um, in order to associate your domain name with your staccato instance's IP is you'll have to do something that might seem to, to newbies a little dangerous, but it's, it's not that bad. Because you're inside of a secure container, um, we can give you sudo access, um, and there's an editor that's default, Vim is that I use, and I'm going to ask that you edit um, your Etsy host file, um, and you'll do so. And all of this is documented, by the way, um, in the community.actestate.com slash staccato section. But basically what you're doing is you're um, letting your instance know what your domain name is and how you want to address your domain um, in the future. And then once you've done that, there are two commands um, that you have also have to do. You have to grant yourself, um, in this case myself, um, admin access so that you can continue to manipulate this. And then we're going to do what we call becoming staccato. And in this instance, I'm going to put all of those components in my architectural diagram in one instance, uh, just to speed things through. Um, you can, again, take a look at the uh, become command um, parameters, uh, either from the command line or on the, on the um, web console, and I'll show you where that, that is in a minute. And you can read all the instructions, and you can spread out the load. But here, in this case, I am just basically becoming all the router, the controller, the health um, monitor and the DEAs and all the bits and parts are all 
um, on one instance, um, just for speed and effect. And then you're going to have to reboot. So once you've done that, um, now we're going to travel over to um, what is our web console. The first time you go into the web console, um, you'll be prompted to confirm your password. And that this is where you'll set your admin password here. So you'll see this um, confirmation only the first time you go into the website. Here I'm just going to switch over and turn on my management console in Foxfire. So what you'll see once you've logged in, and you probably log in on the overview page. So now you see up top here I am that address that I created, the DDNS, it takes me right into the, uh, the console page. I've logged in, and in this case, I've got a number of folks running on this system. I'll just take a look here. We have a number of users already set up. But if I go into the overview here again, you can see the different pieces and parts that are all um, deployed here on this cluster. And um, we can click into any of them and see their status at the moment and where they're running. Staccato also, as I, I clicked through before, has a concept of users. So these are the users, the developer users who are um, deploying applications. And I'm currently logged in as admin, so I can see everything. Um, there are a number of other admins on this demo site. So, and there's a number of folks who are in as users. We can also set up groups. So if I wanted to give deploy an application within a group and give all of these people, um, these folks here, all the 10 members here access to my container, I could do that um, quite easily with um, using the groups. I've got a number of applications that are running here. Um, I'll just take a look at one that's been running for some time. And you can all, um, there's a lot, lot of detail in here. Um, right now I'm running only on one instance, this application, and it's running, it assigned it a, a, a URL. And we're going to take a we're going to actually deploy one right now and set that up. So let's go in. The other thing we have um, with ActiveState is the concept of an app store. You don't need to use the app store. You can deploy from, um, from your desktop. You can deploy from, um, you can push from GitHub. But um, we found it very handy to kind of do, have variations on app stores. These are all based in YAML. And you can use these to um, pre-configure the applications that different departments in an enterprise might have access to. So one department, maybe HR payroll, only gets access to um, uh, their HR and payroll applications, and vacation um, planning, those kinds of things. And then another one might have access to all of the core clinical research trial applications. So you can set all that up and using um, uh, user, users and groups, you can make that all accessible. Um, and configure that nicely. So here I'm going to go in and I'm just going to deploy um, a really simple application because it will do it very quickly for me. I'll go to this. Okay. Just have to type in a unique name. Um, right now I don't belong to any specific groups, so I'm just going to install this app. And what it's doing here is it's Oops, no capital letters either. And install that app. So now it's taking all of the pieces and parts um, of that application. So if I go down to here, you should see that it's stopped. It hasn't it actually hasn't actually spun up that application. It's now just ready to be started. So I'm now going to start that application. It's going to load the data because there's a small database here. It's a currency database. Um, it's going and fetching the data. I'm going to give it a few seconds. Uh, maybe more than a few seconds. There we go. It's turning orange, starting. I'm just going to click here to view the application details. So I went with default. I could have 
easily up the number of instances um, that this was the number of DEA that was this was available for. I could rise it up, but I'm not going to do that in the demo. Um, change the allotted amount of database. There's a lot of configurations that I have, and these I have on my own application if I am a developer, but I don't have the ability to do this um, from the web management console if I am running on, um, if I'm not running um, as admin. So there I am. Uh, my application has been deployed. Um, I'm, I'm running it now. And you can see here at the top, currency on that. So that's the unique address that I've given it to, and this is Staccato. And this is just the default um, IP address I've had. If this was your company, um, it would be yourcompanyname.com and that, or it would be staging yourcompanyname.com or testing or whatever HR payroll um, manufacturing, whatever the, the name is that you'd, you'd selected and you would be able to do this. And this is just a really simple application, easily deployed from the App Store. Um, the same can be done um, running from um, pulling from GitHub. I do this quickly here. I can show you where where all of these data is. This data is hiding. All well, the applications. It's we've just created a nice repository in GitHub that I'm pulling it from. There's a whole bunch of applications and currency converters should be in here somewhere. But basically, what you would do for your company is put these applications into um, a directory on GitHub behind your secure firewall or wherever you host your applications, and the management console would see it in the App Store, and you would be able to deploy it. So there's lots of features here. Um, we can see the bound services that are, are running right now, who's got what, who's running where. I've got a Redis currency, and I've bound, I've only spun up one version of that because I keep using the same database over and over again for my demos. Um, you can see there's a couple of others here. So I've got a couple of applications running MySQL on here. Also there's a, a number of cloud um, events management tools. There's status graphs where you can see the little spikes. There's not a lot going on here in this world, spiking up a little bit. Um, and the processes that are running, some zombies, not. And then it brings us to some of the settings things that we can see here. Um, so we can set the different um, services up. I can start and stop them. Things about Active State that are slightly different um, than other Cloud Foundry based um, platforms as a service. We do have a persistent file system service available. Um, you need this, especially if you're running Drupal or any, a lot of PHP systems need a persistent file system. Um, we have Redis, MongoDB, Postgres, MySQL out of the, out of the box. Again, these are the, the, the components that make up the, the, the um, platform as a service. A list of, here. the one other feature which is, you know, again, you can manage your users here. You can revoke privileges. Um, if you'd like to. Um, and I mentioned and I showed you earlier, um, you can enable sudo or not um, in those containers um, here. Um, we have the value is, is no for um, default to, to, to use staccato. So um, I can set that over so I have access to if there's some, you know, there's a very slim possibility that someone might be able to use the sudo. Um, and many people just revoke that. There are lots of um, easy ways to, to do that for different users um, and make this work. So this is really the basics, um, the very basics of um, Staccato and deploying an application. As I said before, on, on every VM, all of the documentation is there. So everything that I've talked about today is, is back um, in the documentation. It's also on our community website. The Staccato client. If you feel uh, the need uh, to demo and to, to play with the Staccato client, um, you can demo that and we have them for Mac, Linux, and Windows and that will allow you to do basically everything that you've seen in this web management console because the web management console is built over a RESTful API um, and you 
you have complete ability to script any of the commands um, and work with those. So um, with that, I'm going to return back to my slide deck here just for quick and wrap up so that we have time for some questions and answers. And let's see if we can... All right, and now we should page down. And for some reason, it's not letting me do that. So the next step that you would take, um, and we're not going to try and attempt that today, is um, to build out a cluster. So you take that template that you created in the first stage of this um, presentation, and you would become a cloud controller or uh, with a health manager and router running on it, and do um, reconfigure the, the your paths so it optimizes for the types of applications that you want to be running. And this, um, all of this information, again, is on the VMs under documentation, or it's in the um, docs-staccato.com server operations HTML pound index too, but it's all searchable, and we've made, I think, a pretty good um, stab at keeping all of that documentation up to date for all of the new releases, and there will be a whole section on CloudStack shortly. So. Just to wrap up a little bit, the benefits for IT and development teams is that really you're being able to go from code, working on your desktop, to cloud in just a few minutes once the PaaS is deployed. Um, I hope that I've shown you that it's, it's relatively simple to um, deploy a PaaS on um, CloudStack. The UI, again, and the wizards that are available with the CloudStack UI make it really simple. Um, and for IT systems administrators and DevOps types, there is a significant time savings in the automation of deploying the stack. You're really reducing your manual conf configuration, um, and you're offering to your developers that sort of self-service automation that they um, get when they go out to a public pass like Heroku or Google App Engine, but you're bringing it in-house, and you're allowing um, your IT team to focus on um, other value adds um, like security and um, all kinds of good things that they do um, and not on the manual task of um, scripting and creating stacks and configuring them for your developers and for your different application needs. And really, basically, um, Staccato is a pass on your term. Um, so you can configure it um, and customize it for the needs of your application. Your your application development lifecycle and for your enterprise's um, security and privacy issues. For developers, this is great. Um, it, it eliminates the need for what I call shadow IT projects um, or giving your credit card to a public pass and trying to sidestep everything that's going on in terms of compliance and governance within your um, organization. Um, it gives you the freedom to do the on-demand self-service and automation that we, we know and love and expect now in the cloud. Um, and hopefully we've given you the flexibility um, with the choices of languages and data services for your applications, giving you more time to innovate and create wonderful applications. So with that, um, I'd like to stop here. And if you have any questions, please feel free to, um, to ask now. Um, and if um, I don't answer your questions, um, you can always get a hold of me at dianem at activestate.com. And now I'd like to turn it back to Gerilyn, and thanks again to the CloudStack Citrix folks for um, doing all this amazing work on the UI and making it so easy to deploy Staccato on 